Hi friends! Today we will learn about different types of heterotrophs and heterotrophic nutrition modes. So let's start. In our last section, we learned about the different modes of nutrition. Let's revise what we learned in our last section. On the basis of the modes of nutrition, all the living organisms can be classified as autotrophs or heterotrophs. And their modes of nutrition are known as the autotrophic mode of nutrition and the heterotrophic mode of nutrition, respectively. We know that plants can make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. In this process, green plants and some other organisms use sunlight to synthesize complex compounds like carbohydrates using carbon dioxide and water. Oxygen is released as a byproduct in this process. So, green plants prepare their own food. This is why they are called autotrophs. The rest of all life forms except for these green plants are called heterotrophs or consumers as they cannot prepare their own food. Directly or indirectly, they take food from plants. Today, we will learn about consumers, types of consumers, and their modes of nutrition. They are the organisms that feed on plants or other animals for energy, and they are also known as heterotrophs. There are four types of heterotrophs or consumers. Herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, detritivores and detritivore are further categorized into scavengers and decomposers. Herbivores are plant eaters, carnivores are flesh eaters, omnivores eat plants as well as flesh, and detritivores feed on dead plants and animals. Scavengers ingest dead material and then digest. Decomposers digest dead material and then ingest. Scavengers do not break down organic compounds in the dead remains into smaller molecules. But, but decomposers decompose the complex molecules in dead remains into simpler compounds that are then returned to the soil. Now let's learn about heterotrophy or heterotrophic modes of nutrition. There are three types of heterotrophic modes of nutrition. Holozoic nutrition, Saprophytic nutrition, parasitic nutrition. Let's first learn about holozoic nutrition. This type of nutrition is heterotrophic nutrition, in which food is ingested and then the internal processing of gaseous, liquid, or solid food particles occurs. Amoebas and all types of animals, including humans, exhibit this type of nutrition. There are several stages of holozoic nutrition which often occur in separate compartments within an organism, such as the liver, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. Now let's learn about different stages of holozoic nutrition. Ingestion. It takes place by engulfing the food totally in the mouth. In a paramecium, it occurs through phagocytis. Digestion. This process involves the physical digestion and the enzymatic digestion of the food, as in food is broken down into smaller pieces, and then these pieces of food are then broken down into simpler molecules. Next step is absorption. Absorption is the transportation of digested food particles to all the parts of the body through blood, or they are transferred to the cytoplasm in the case of a paramecium. Now let's learn what is assimilation. The digested food particles go and then become a part of the body tissues, or they're used in the cells for various metabolic activities. In this process again, the digested food particles or small molecules are used to form larger molecules again. For example, amino acids, proteins, DNA, RNA are produced through assimilation. Last process is ejection. That is the expelling of undigested material from the body. It is also called defecation. 
So these are the five processes that occurs in the case of holozoic nutrition or the five steps of holozoic nutrition. Let's revise. Ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and ejection. Ingestion, food is firstly taken into the body through the mouth. And then digestion occurs. That is, the food is converted into a simple soluble form by various enzymes. Absorption, simplified products thus formed are then absorbed or transported to the body. Assimilation, simplified products are used for various processes. And then is ejection. The undigested food particles are expelled. Holozoic nutrition occurs in herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores consume plants and plant products. Carnivores consume flesh of the other animals, and omnivores consume both flesh of animals and plant products. Now let's learn about the second type of heterotrophic nutrition, which is saphirotrophic nutrition. Saphirotrophs or decomposers. The taking of nutrition from dead organic matter in the form of a solution is called as saphirotrophic nutrition. And the organisms which use saphirotrophic modes of nutrition are called saphirotrophs. For example, fungi. Let's learn more about saphirotrophic mode of nutrition. Saphirotrophs are non green plants. Examples are mushrooms, yeast, and bacteria. Saphirotrophs get their food from dead or decaying organic matter. They grow on dead organic matter such as cow dung, wood, and bread or so on and so forth. They secrete the digested juices on dead organic matter. This is then digested outside of their body. Then they absorb the digested food material in the form of juices from that organic matter. This is called as saphirotrophic mononutrition. The main difference from holozoic nutrition is holozoic nutrition Digestion takes place inside of the body, whereas saphirotrophic nutrition digestion takes place outside of the body. They secrete the digestive juices on the dead material, and material is digested outside of their body. And the digested dead material in the form of digested juices are absorbed by saphirotrophs. Saphirotrophic nutrition is also called as lysotrophic nutrition. Now let's learn about another heterotrophic mode of nutrition, which is parasitic nutrition. It is a type of heterotrophic nutrition in which an organism, which is called a parasite, lives on the body surface or inside of the body of another type of organism, which is called the host. Parasites get nutrition directly from the body of the host. This mode of nutrition is called Parasitism, and it's the relationship between two organisms, where one is called the host and the other is called the parasite, and the parasite drives at the cost of the other, which is called as the host. So a parasite derives its nutrition from the host organism, which is mostly harmful for the host, as the host has to feed the parasite from its share of nutrition. And the relationship between the host and the parasite is called a symbiotic relationship. Parasites can be of two types, endoparasites and ectoparasites. Endoparasites. These types of parasites live inside of the body of the host. Ectoparasites. Ectoparasites. These types of parasites live on the outer surface of the host and generally attach themselves during feeding only. For example, mosquitoes and ticks. Both types of parasites derive the nutrition for survival from the host organism. We learn that parasites are heterotrophs that obtain their nutrition from other organisms. Now, let's learn about some parasitic plants or heterotrophic plants. Parasitic plants obtain some part of their nutrition from another plant, so they are heterotrophic plants. These types of plants form a vascular union with the host, and that vascular union that they form with the host plant is known as 
Hostorium, which is used to derive nutrition from the host plant. Here you can see pictures of some parasitic plants with hostorium that they form on the host plant to derive nutrition from the host plant. The most common examples of parasitic plants or heterotrophic plants are climbing wines, lianas, and epiphytes. So friends, today we learned about heterotrophic motor nutrition.